Yay! You've got yourself a new ESP32 S2 development board, or some modules, or something. Congratulations! That's wicked. Now, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to use it? How do you set up the IDF to talk to it? Remember, there's no Arduino support right now, there's no MicroPython support right now, and there's no CircuitPython support right now. And even the IDF support for this is very early, and it's not compatible with the current IDF for the ESP32 regular boards. It's a completely different toolchain, it's a different GCC compiler. In this video, I will step you through setting up the IDF and configuring what you need to be able to talk to your new S2 board. Before I do that, let's have a chat about why there is a serial UART chip on here connected to the USB rather than using the onboard USB that is part of the new S2 chip. The reason Espressive have put a serial UART chip on their boards is if you configure it to use the USB that's inside the chip, then you obviously can't use the USB inside the chip for anything USB on the go, which means you can't connect an external USB peripheral to it when it's being used as the UARTs. So in the case of Espressive, they've got a separate serial chip to be able to flash the chip and then you can use GPIO 19 and 20 which is a D minus and D plus and you could technically connect a USB connector to it and use USB on the go to connect a USB device. Right now though all of that is kind of up in the air because the IDF is not finished. It's still in pre-beta and there's a lot of work still to be done and a lot of decisions still to be made. Ultimately though, whether you choose to design a board that uses the built-in USB or whether you use an external serial UART chip, it's going to be the same process to flash the board. So let's have a look at how to get the IDF set up to be able to talk to your new S2. Okay, this might seem a little bit daunting for many of you, especially if you have never experienced the IDF before. I'm going to go through all of the steps to install everything from scratch, although you'll see that a lot of the things I go to install through this process, my machine's going to claim that I've already got those things installed, because obviously I'm already developing with the SP32 S2 and other ESP32 boards, so a lot of the prerequisites that I need are already here. But I'll still go through all of the steps for you. In the description below, you will find links to all of the different getting started guides and steps and per platform links that you need to follow. I'm going to be doing this on a Mac. Most of it is the same on Linux and some of it's the same on Windows, but the links in the description that point to the different guides cover all the different platforms. Okay, I've already created a directory to put all of this in. As you can see here, esp32-s2-video. Unfortunately, you can't install everything into a Python environment, a virtual environment, because one of the last steps that we'll do within this install creates a Python virtual environment to install some things in, and you can't put an environment inside an environment. Now, the very first thing that we're going to do is install and or upgrade pip. Pip is a Python install package system. In this case, I've already got it, but that's the command you're going to want to use to get pip on your machine. Next, we need to install a package called PySerial. Pip install PySerial. It's going to say I've already got it. Next, we need to install CMake and Ninja. Now, on the Mac, you can do that a few different ways. I'm going to use a package manager called Brew. Before I do that, on the Mac, you need to make sure that your frameworks folder and user local frameworks has got the correct permissions. So in my case, I need to do a, a chone, which is to change ownership of that folder and a chmod as well. And now I'm going to install CMake and Ninja. Again, this is going to tell me I've already got it installed. So I have CMake already installed and Ninja, which is the build system for CMake already installed. Now remember, a lot of this is Mac specific, but all of these steps for all the different platforms are available in the links below. So now that that's in there, we can actually go through and install the IDF. So I'm going to make a folder called ESP and then I'm going to go inside that folder and I'm going to clone the latest IDF Git repository. We're cloning master, so we're cloning the bleeding edge. So it's not a particular release or a particular branch, we want the latest because new S2 support and changes are being added all the time and we want to make sure that we've always got the latest version. As you can see this takes a while, like I can fast forward it. This install has created a folder called ESP-IDF. It's going to go inside that 
and we're now going to install everything we need for the S2 by issuing dot install dot sh and in my case everything was already there if you get an error about certificates at this step then you might want to have a look at the link in the description below about how to install the certificates command inside Python so now that we've done that I can issue this command here which exports all of my paths for me into this session now I've actually got this as part of my bash profile that whenever I log into my terminal window it already sets these paths for me but I'm going to issue it anyway just so you can see what happens and that goes and actually sets up all of the paths that I need for this particular session to be able to build so that is pretty much it for installing the IDF it's not a terrible process I've been through this process quite a few times. I know that for someone who's doing it for the first time, looking through all the documentation, it's gonna be a bit intimidating, but that's as simple as it gets. So what we have to do now is get something to build on our device. Okay, so I'm gonna go back a directory now. You can have a look and see they've got the ESP IDF folder. We're now gonna copy the basic getting started hello world example over from the included examples folder inside the IDF and we're gonna put it just next to our IDF folder. So I'm going to do a copy, tell it to include all the folders. This is the path to it, and dot in my case just means put it here. And this IDF underscore path has come from the export we just did. So I've done that. If I now do an LS, you can see there's a hello world. I'm going to go into hello world. Before we do anything else, we need to know what device name our ESP32 S2 is. Now, I know what it is on mine. The dev board I'm using, the Sawala board, has a CP2104 on it. And I know that on the Mac, that it uses tty.slab USB to UART. So your device, depending on the platform you're on or depending on the board you're using, will potentially have a different device name. You just need to find out what COM port it's on if you're in Windows or what your device name is if you're on Linux or Mac. From there, what we're gonna do is just jot that down somewhere so we can reference it again later. Now, inside Hello World, the first thing we need to do is to let this project know, let's just have a look inside. We need to let this project know that it's gonna be built for the ESP32 S2. So we do that by setting the target for the project. So it's an idf.py. You'll find that all the commands that you issue uses idf.py. We're doing a set target and ESP32 S2. Now, when we hit enter, what that does is goes through the project and sets everything up about the project to be using all of the S2 components as opposed to the regular ESP32 components. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to open up the menu config screen. Now this is gonna look a bit weird for people. And what we get now is a complete configuration menu system for this particular project. And anything that we set in here will get stored for the project permanently. We don't have to run this again. So this is where we do all sorts of things, like for instance, if we go to the serial flash config and we can tell it how big our flash is, by default it thinks it's two megabytes. I'm using a rover, so I know that's got four megabytes. I could also go to my flash speed and set that to 80 megahertz and DIO to QIO, but I won't in this case. Put that back to 40. There's lots of things that you can set up, including going to the component config and inside here is all sorts of stuff. I'm not gonna do a run through of any of this now, but if we go all the way down to ESP32 S2 specific, we can set up anything that's specific for the S2, like support for external SPI RAM, cache configuration, the CPU frequency is at 160 megahertz by default, we can set that to 240. So I'm gonna do all of that, I'm gonna hit escape, 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 and then at the end, do I wanna save it? Yes. And that set up all my build configuration. All we have to do now is build it. Now there are two ways you can build. You can just tell it to build using this command and all that will do is build the project. Or you can tell it to flash it and if it isn't already built, it will build it at the same time. So I'm going to tell it to flash it. This is the command for flashing. And as you can see here, this is where we're using our device name. So dash P is for the port dash B is for the board rate, and we're telling it to flash. So I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna realize that it hasn't been built yet, so it's gonna go and build it. And once it's finished building, it should look very similar to what you've might've seen before, where it's trying to connect to the board, connects, it writes out everything, 
and then it's finished and it does a, a reset. So that code is now on our ESP32 S2. How do we see what it's doing? Well, you can now also issue what's called a monitor command, which is basically just having a serial connection to it, like the screen command or some other TTY putty type applications. But if I do a monitor on it, that will actually view what the board is doing. And the board is rebooting every 10 seconds and that's basically it. But each time it boots, it says, hello world. It lets us know some information about the particular board. I'm just gonna hit control and right square bracket just to cancel. As you can see here, it's saying this is an ESP32 S2 chip with one core, Wi-Fi, silicon revision zero, four megabytes of external flash. It's got 251K roughly of free heap and it's just gonna sit there and every 10 seconds reboot itself. But you get to see some interesting things from the boot log that comes up. So it knows what IDF version we're on. We're at 4.2 developer branch. These are the settings that I was going through before, the SPI speed and the flash size. Shows you the partition table, that how the chip has been laid out. And then we can look through here and we can see the project names, hello world, app versions one, the compile time, and that's it. Congratulations, if you followed along, you have now set up your IDF and you have flashed firmware for the very first time on your ESP32 S2. So all of your projects will sit inside here. You can create a brand new project. The best way to do that if you want to start a project from scratch is to just duplicate the hello world and go from there. How a project is structured is way beyond the scope of this video. I'm still coming to terms with using CMake, which is what the new IDF uses. It used to use GNU Make which to me seemed a lot easier, but GNU Make doesn't support more than one architecture type in the build system where CMake does. And because the S2 uses a different tool chain and architecture and compiler than what the regular ESP32s do, that's why Espressive have moved the IDF over to CMake. Maybe someone smarter than me can put a video together on how CMake really works. But that's it. That's how you flash your new ESP32 S2. If you've got one, I hope you have fun working on it. If you've enjoyed this video or if it's confused you, either way, I hope you found it slightly useful. Please click that like button if you did. If you're new here, please subscribe if you haven't already and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. To my patrons, you're awesome. Thanks so much. Until next time, happy coding. Bye.